if you find that your IP pumps are just always beeping at you all the time, a couple of things to avoid that. So the main issue that you'll get is down occlusion or you've got air on the line. Air on the line means that there's some, at some stage there's been an air bubble. This can often be, say, if this fluid bag had been tipped up, back up the wrong way, like so. I'm going to pop this out. Quickest way to fix it would be to remove the line and let it flush through. Or you can choose the settings on the machine, obviously disconnecting it from the patient first. And use the settings within the machine to bolus prime it through. Um, and it will throw all of those air bubbles out and then you'll have a nice fresh line ready to go. So visually inspecting is really the best kind of way to find these. The, the machine will let you know. The next one is a down occlusion. So I said before, making sure that this has enough slack in it so that this isn't kind of crimped anywhere. Anywhere that the fluid line is crimped from here to the patient is going to cause a down occlusion. It's super common as well that it is a down occlusion because the leg is kinked. So it might be kinked at the elbow. If we put the IV line in too far up or, you know, it's a funky little leg, that's the only place that you can put it. Sometimes if a dog is or a cat is sitting in their cage and they're you know they sit like this or they sit all kind of hunched in that is going to kink the end of that catheter and it's going to stop this from flowing so keeping that in mind when you're placing your catheters also the other thing that you can do is wrap the leg so that they can't physically tuck it in and kink the leg at all so you can keep wrapping so it's nice and kind of firm straight out i find that that kind of works the best especially with cats Another down occlusion might be that this is kinked in your cage door or it is kinked at some stage on your surgical bench. So just visually inspecting it the whole way down. It could be that it is one of these is closed. So if this is not open, it'll come as down occlusion because we've got literally an occlusion, which is this. Most often you will find that you have an unclamped one of these little locks. So make sure that they are all unlocked and ready to go for your patient. You might get a couple of issues as well if your fluid bag isn't high up enough. If you've got it kind of at the same height as the patient or at the same height as your IV pump, make sure that there is a significant height difference. Your IV bag needs to always be up really high, especially if you're piggybacking. Like if you've got a large patient say they're staying overnight and it needs two fluid bags, making sure that these aren't at the same height. Your second one needs to be just as high up so that fluid it's got a gravity and it's coming down it needs that gravity to move if it is sitting at the same height it's not going to be able to move across it needs to be up high another one is make sure your fluid pumps are charged a lot of the time you'll come in the next morning after leaving a patient overnight and your fluid pump has died that patient might have only got two hours of fluids so it's not really you know it's a bit pointless so making sure that your fluid pumps are always charged i learned recently that a really good thing to do for your fluid pumps to save their battery life is always keep them plugged in the power. So if you've got them in a section in your treatment area or in your surgery room that you can access power all the time, make sure it's plugged in all the time. Thank you for watching this video and if you've got other questions or anything else you'd like to see, make sure you throw it in the comments.